Let's expand the conversation and bring in another guest now into the show. And this is former Kiambu Governor William Kabogo who joins us. Good morning, sir. Good morning. How are you doing? Very well, thank you. Welcome to the Situation Room. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you. I see you have in your background one of your former uh, Kiambu mates. <laughs> yes, my, my first president, Mr. Jomo Kenyatta. Mm. <laughs> Lovely background there, Mwishimiwa. Karibu sana Mwishimiwa. When he was in good company. Yes. <laughs> so I was a young man when he was president. Ah, right. <laughs> yes, indeed, uh, Mwishimiwa, you are a, a very young man then. Very true. <laughs> now, we're talking about, first of all, Nairobi County Assembly in about uh, an hour or, and a half or so is expected to start vetting Anne Kanan Mwenda to a position of deputy right. governor, and then maybe she becomes governor. But before that, there's a court ruling that's expected at about 8 o'clock on whether she, right. uh, the vetting can take place. The question we are asking yeah. ourselves is, yes, there's a constitution and all, yes, and all that. The people of Nairobi voted for Sonko and Igade. Sonko had some point decided to be to 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 have Anne Kananu as the nominee, and then at some right. point we hear he withdrew. He's telling us that he withdrew that. Now, is this right. going to be representative of the people of Nairobi's choice? Right. Now, uh, two two things uh, come into my mind. If they are vetting today. They are vetting with appointment done by Mike Mbovi Sonko when he was governor. Mm -hmm. By the time Mike Mbovi Sonko was impeached, whether he revoked that letter or not, the minute after impeachment, Sonko was no longer governor. And so, going back to pick someone else who had been appointed many months before beats the intent of those who made our constitution. As you said earlier, this was a joint ticket between Mike Ndovisonko and Polika Pugane. And they were voted for by the people of... Are you there? Yes, we are. Yes, we are. Mm -hmm. They were voted for by the people of Nairobi, mm -hmm. as you rightly said. So, what is you know, the law does not operate retrospectively, backwards. If Bobby truly says he revoked it, suppose it's true he did revoke. So, what would they be vetting? And you know that. Uh, well, there's a small lacuna there because if they were put together in the election of 2017, then allowing a governor the will to appoint a deputy at any point, that is a small, there's a small disconnect there. Mm. But but let, let's be careful we do not discuss a matter that is before court because it's subdued it, if we do not discuss the merits of that case. But what is so difficult in giving the people of Nairobi an opportunity to vote again? Because the law says, in the event the office of governor falls vacant for one reason or the other, insanity, incapacity, death, all those things, and there is no deputy governor, then the speaker holds office for 60 days. Mm. And within that period, IBC will conduct a fresh election. So why do you want to leave the people of Nairobi guessing? Is it that it's too expensive? That is it that IBC will not manage? What do you think it is, William? What, what do you think? I mean, here we come, and just as you said, there are two things here. So uh, Nairobians also selected MCAs with the understanding that MCAs would represent them, right, and represent their views and their desires. On the other hand, maybe wanting an opportunity to make the selection again. What do you think stands but in do, the way of do doing this? Do the MCAs have the power to say, no, go home, we want an election? I don't think so. Mm. 
So it's we we, we are caught between a stone and a hard rock. But if you want to be fair to the people of Nairobi, and, and let me let me just clarify one thing. I've seen my name being floated all over that I am I'm going for Nairobi. That is not me. That's not how that's not how I do stuff. Mm. So I'm not speaking this way, hoping that there'll be a by election. I will not be on that ballot if there's a by election. Having said that, why don't we allow the people in Nairobi to vote? Why do you think it's a difficult decision it, to allow them to vote right now? Why it, do you think it's, it's because by elections are becoming tricky? Mm -hmm. Yes, they are unpredictable. <laughs> they don't follow certain scripts, huh? Uh, now, sometimes it becomes very hard. But again, uh, let's not lose the point that we need, if we are amending the constitution very soon, it looks like we will. I hope we don't. But if we are doing it, we need to amend the law such that if the office of governor falls vacant, and the remainder of the period is in excess of 11 months, then a by-election should be held. But if it's under 11 months, then you can say the period is too short, the deputy governor can take over. And equally, the office of the president. If the office falls vacant for one reason or the other, and the period remaining is over one year, the people of Kenya should be allowed to vote. I think now the, 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 that, is, that is renewal of, uh, of uh, fresh time. Mandate, <laughs> mandate given by the people. We, we, let's let's actually discuss this a bit further because what uh, Mwishimu is basically proposing is if the office falls vacant, it doesn't matter whether the deputy is in place. He's saying basically, let's go back to the ballot, right? And if we are, that's what we are doing, then going back to the ballot, then what exactly happens? Let's look at the case of Nyeri. So Nyeri, governor uh, dies within a year, and then now what happens? Instead of the deputy becoming governor, and we move on, what Kabogo seems to be saying is, if it's within a year, let the people of Nyeri go back, and vote again. So what was the point of having a joint ticket with a deputy then? Hmm. You see that? Well, I get the impression that what uh, Honorable Kaboga is suggesting that we change the constitution. Hmm. Because I think the, the, the office of the uh, deputy governor hmm. is there specifically for such a purpose. And it's because of the constitution and the rules that it has that we now have a speaker of the assembly in Nairobi acting as the governor. Because it's as per the constitution, as it currently is. That's true. Yes. And and uh, what what I'm hearing you, William, saying is, uh, and I've just given the example of, of Nyeri. In Nyeri, the governor died within a short time after the election. Yes. So is that what you're saying, that in that case, in your opinion, Nyeri should have gone back to elect a new governor? Yes, if that's my question, I, I, that's what I'm saying. The period that was remaining was over a close to four years. Yep. So my suggestion is, if the remaining period when the office was vacant is over a year, then allow the people to go and bring in a new set. So, But if the period is under one year, then it doesn't make sense mm -hmm. to run into a by-election only to be in office for less than 12 months. So, Mwishibewa, do I... Let do me I, tell you why. Let yes. me tell you why I think this. Please, say so. When you leave the office of... Uh, when the office of uh, uh, governor... When the governor is in office, he will continue to live under threat because there is someone who quickly will benefit from a vacancy in that office. I'm not suggesting the governor of Nyeri was killed, but I'm only saying we are human and we are Kenyans. So in that, with that argument, then Bomet should have had an election, Kiambu should have had an election. Uh, no, Kiambu, we didn't have a... a, a um... There was impeachment. Oh, you're talking about uh, impeachment of Ferdinand. Yes. Uh, yeah, if, if the time remaining was more than a year. It was more than a year. 
Yes. So <laughs> you would see the young man or the old man complaining he was thrown out and, uh, irregularly because uh, the deputy governor wanted to be governor. So we either need to polish our constitution on the conditions that will allow a deputy governor to come through or have a by-election. You know, in the U.S., they have the 25th uh, Amendment, which they are trying to invoke now to kick out uh, this thug called uh, Trump. Mm. Uh, so if we have something like that here, then we leave it open for the deputy governor to be able to call the shot upon vacancy of that office. But let's go back to Nairobi. It only takes 24 hours to get an election done in Nairobi. Why don't we allow the people of Nairobi to decide this? Knowing what we know about the MCAs and how they operate in uh, City Hall, you know that uh, quickly they will vet this uh, lady who we are in doubt of because Sonko says he, as you say, he says he revoked. Should anyone come up with a letter in the assembly that says Sonko, when in office, revoked, then they will not be sitting. It will be void of an issue in the beginning. And the fate of that lady is feta accompli. <laughs> You're thrown in all the Latin. Okay. Which <laughs> were to go with your, with your argument, uh, let me yeah. just ask the question and with your understanding, because you have been a governor. Is there anything that is happening that is outside the dictates of the Constitution? Well, I would say yes and no. If we're imagining some court did appoint her and the stopping was not done maliciously, it was done in the in due process of law, then they would be legitimately vetting her. But if they did not, my question is, did there exist a deputy governor when Sonko was impeached? If the answer to that question is no, then the vetting would be irregular. Was there a deputy governor? There was a nominee in the records of the county assembly. The law does not say the nominee takes over. <laughs> the law says the deputy <laughs> governor takes over, right? Yes. So there must have been in existence a deputy governor at that point in time. You do not become deputy unless you're vetted and passed. So what you're saying is that, is it that time lapsed on this particular issue? Or are you saying that... That would that be my imagination. That would be my imagination because the law does not work retrospectively. They want to go back and fix and make sure there is a governor. But Mike Sonko is not there. Mm. You get it. Yep. Let's go into the, uh, the argument of um, why not allow the Nairobi voter to then participate in selecting a governor at this point. Politically speaking, William, is there a point? So you have a year, basically, you have a, a deputy governor who comes, or a governor who is elected in February towards the end of a financial year. Then you have just one financial year to run the affairs of the county of Nairobi. And you have a national. Then you come you have to my argument. Yes. Yeah. Is there a point of electing this? I mean, you'll you'll just come in. You'll just be a figurehead. In actual real sense, I mean, you have a point. There's really very little that that governor will come and do, because as it is, the preparations for the final year of budget, which is 21, 22, is in place. Uh, by the time he catches up with the messes that happen in Nairobi, it will be six months to another election. Yep. But that does not mean we break the law. Mm. We are setting a president. Should there be no governor at some point, people may even run to forge the letters of appointment. William, we spoke to... Um, well, I, the we spoke to the mover of the motion to to, to have um, the former governor, um, um, Mike Mbuvisonko, impeached, right? And from what we hear, yeah. um, maybe now this can fuel this conversation a little bit more. From what we hear... Um, it, it, it sounds as though they are ticking a box here. The vetting of this uh, this um, nominee then is something that they must do. 
So here they are with something that they must do vis-a-vis uh, -vis the voice of the people which you're saying is necessary to be heard. We also know that the MCAs at one place stand as representatives of the voice of the people. So would you see this as a way that they are fulfilling their duty towards representing the people of Nairobi if what we're looking for is representation, bringing in a new, a new candidate? Or are they just doing what they ought to do? Would you see that I, this I process think, would bring I, about I, the voice of the people? It's very difficult to ascertain uh, whether it will, because mm. my guess is they're doing what they need to do to fulfill their duty of vetting an appointee of the governor. But if they start by debating whether that candidate is rightfully or legally before them, mm. they may find that that candidate is not by law or within any law before them. But if they translate uh, that the candidate is still a candidate of Mike Bumisonko, then who was governor, then they may proceed in the vet. But I'll tell you how it will go. They will vet, pass, he will be declared deputy governor. The following day, they will uh, call him in and, and swear him in as governor. But who wants to, you know, the section of the constitution that says that the deputy governor takes over. And the matter ends there. Mm. That's what is going to happen. So we're, we're discussing uh, what we already know. Mm. It's already done. So let's take a unless, break at this point. Unless, <laughs> unless, unless, of course, a matter comes from court today and say... No vetting. Uh, sorry, no vetting until... Um, the matter is heard and determined. T time for us and to take a break on KT at home. From, knowing from our, our behavior in Kenya with courts, mm. the matter may not be determined in the next five years. The court order may not even arrive in the county assembly until tomorrow morning after the job has been done. Anyway, five minutes to six minutes to eight o'clock. Time for us to take a break on KT and home. We are having a conversation with former Kambu Governor William Kapogo with regards to the running of affairs in Nairobi County Assembly. We know that uh, the vetting is supposed to happen today for Anne Kananumwenda for the post of deputy governor, and then she could take over as governor. But also, with uh, ahead of that, in fact, in addition to that, we also want to have a conversation about governors and their deputies and that relationship that they have. Because uh, Mr. Kabogo has even intimated to that kind of friction between a governor and the deputy. So keep it right here for that conversation. Time for a break. We'll be back shortly. Good morning. Eighty-seven point nine Spice FM, Mombasa. So as uh, Katie and Home joins us back uh, in a couple of minutes, we still have William Kabogo online. He is the former deputy governor of uh, of Kiambu. So we're talking about what's happening in Nairobi. He says, you know. Basically, let's assume that there's a court order that comes out and says no vetting. Uh, what time will the court order arrive at the county assembly? Will the vetting have started? And all those things. Politically, this seems to be a done deal. Uh, legally, there are very many issues that have cropped up. Okia Mtata has a case in court. Mike Sonko has a case in court. There are several cases in court you know, over, over this matter. But, William, let's talk about the relationship between governors and their deputies with whom they go to the ballot right. so you pick somebody as your running mate you go to the people campaigning together and putting together a, a joint front and showing that you get you are united you're working together and then you go to office and it obviously it becomes obvious to everybody that you two don't see eye to eye what is this what happens well, um, I may not speak from my own experience because I didn't have a problem with my deputy. We worked quite well. Mm. Um, as if you look at the deputy as your principal assistant or principal deputy to be able to help you carry out your work as governor, then things will work. But human beings are quite ambitious. When you find a deputy governor is, is, is a governor, possibly a governor in waiting, 
then you will start thinking he will undermine you. He will make sure that, you know, the MCAs may see a window of impeaching you. So you also live in fear. I, I have seen it. Mm. Uh, also, we have seen situations where deputy governors have had no job to do. Absolutely nothing. Yep. Because they are kept in the dark. Yep. And this is how it started and they they started an organization of deputy governors to fight for their rights. Yep. So, in my opinion, if we are to go forward uh, with devolution as we should, then we should be able to cut out the job of a deputy governor properly and also make sure that the governor is stable and is able to work without fear. You know, uh, if, if, if you have an accident, touch wood, it doesn't happen. And it's a truck that is on the wrong side of the road that hits the cow, the governor. Mm. Of course, people will start saying, oh, I'm a gongwa. I'm a pangiwa. You know, I'm a pangiwa. <laughs> so we need to polish the, our, our laws in, in, in as far as the duties of the deputy governor and how a governor, you know, imagine today it's very easy to remove a governor. You need, I think, two-thirds hmm. of MCAs. Yep. But to remove the speaker of county assembly, they require 75%. Why is it easier to remove a governor? You get? Mm -hmm. Again, uh, uh, the grounds on which a governor should be impeached are very, very general. Of course, over the last four or five years, the courts have expressed themselves on the threshold. But again, it is an argument like today when you ask about the MCAs whether they will uh, be given a court order in time. They may get it on time and say a court uh, separation of powers. A court cannot tell a legislature on how to run its affairs. And you know there are cases of that nature where those orders were never followed. Uh, so we are also in a situation in this country where orders are followed depending on who they favor. Yep. So the rule of law is one thing that we lack here. Because as bad as a judgment should be, or a ruling from a court of law, follow it. Follow the procedure to appeal and go to the apex court. But you cannot ignore... A... You remember Minister Kimunya, as he was then, Minister for uh, Land. Mm -hmm. He said the uh, court orders are just papers. I mean, not court orders. Titles, Titles. are just papers. Mm -hmm. So since then, titles have been lit papers in very many occasions. You have your land, it's yours, you bought, like where I sit now. Someone goes to court and decides they own this house. Then we have to be in court the next 10 years. Yep. William Kabogo, former Campbell governor with us on the line and having a conversation this morning. We're talking about the deputy governors now and the role of the deputy, not just the governor, even at the presidential level, the role of the deputy. Constitutionally, it's just written there that you're the principal, principal assistant. So what does that principal assistant mean? We see our deputy governor, those who support our deputy president, I'm sorry, saying that the deputy president does not have any job anymore, that all the work has been given to other people and other uh, state officers. We also see, for example, news coming out of Nyeri yesterday. Nyeri governor, uh, Kahiga, saying he regrets appointing and nominating uh, Dr. Karugu as the deputy because he feels she does not even come to work anymore. She doesn't attend county functions. What is this role of a deputy? Probably she's frustrated. She doesn't have any work to do and so she has no need to go to work. I'm only thinking yep. uh, loud. Again, we said, let's cut out the job of a deputy president and the job of a deputy governor. But remember, even if we cut out their jobs and you're not reading from the same page, your boss will frustrate you. Your boss will kick you out. Mm. If you also behave like an, uh, you know, <laughs> like your a boss will, 
Uh, yeah, so you behave like what? <laughs> American English, I think I think <laughs> we will want you to fill in the blanks <laughs> yourself. Uh-huh. Uh, like if you behave like an ass, then your boss will kick you out. Mm-hmm. So really, it, it's a situation where you need to be able to find a formula of working together. And and as Kenyans, we have find, we find it very difficult to work together. But William, I look at it. Well, like we when these two people are, are campaigning for this position, yes. it's not necessarily, yes. and unfortunately, it's not necessarily that they're going to work together through the term. It is that person has been used to give a brighter outlook to things during the campaign period. And then thereafter, the right. person is cutted to the side. Um, so uh, you really, that, that it, sounds, be, it ta- sounds but, terrible, but the deputy is really of no use after the campaign is over and the person is in seat. Well, that was not the case in the case of the president and his uh, able deputy in mm. the first term. Why is it happening in the second term? Mm. There probably things that he did. I'm only imagining that uh, uh, the president need need him anymore because he doesn't want the third term. Mm. Or there are probably things that the deputy in the first term uh, that the president had to stomach because of uh, his need for a second term. So either way... Which uh, this, I have not, to ask this question, even as you're speculating. Uh, this one is factual because you can tell us. When a governor chooses a deputy, do you actually look for someone who can deputize you or who, someone who is able to do exactly what you're doing? Or do you look for someone who you feel doesn't quite match what you are capable of doing? If you ask me how I chose my deputy, um, I look for someone who would hold, who who would bring corporate life into the management of public affairs as office of governor. Um, Gerard, who was my deputy, was a CEO of Unilever International, breweries, all these things. And I wanted that experience brought on board. Mm-hmm. Not that I have not uh, been in the helm of an organization I have, but I wanted more of that. And it worked very well with us. And again, I gave him a portfolio of one of the ministries. Mm. So he was, he was a deputy governor and minister for commerce. So all the entire stuff that had to do with the ministry of commerce or the Department of Commerce, was handled by him as minister. Mm-hmm. So even when we sat in the cabinet, he sat in cabinet both as deputy governor and as, you know, minister or executive in charge of commerce. I think you've answered the question uh, that I didn't... But again, yes. the, guy, mm-hmm. but the guy did not have any political ambitions mm-hmm. at all. Mm-hmm. Was that a consideration so, for you? Also, also, also that uh, it was, yes. I dread, I had read the law, <laughs> I read the county government act, and I knew I needed to fix this place as quickly as possible, and also have a second time, which didn't happen. Uh, but I'm good, I'm good. I'm not happy with what is happening out there. But uh, yeah, so it is what it is. So should the same happen then? at uh, both national level and county level, where it's fixed in law that a deputy governor or deputy president must have a ministerial portfolio? Well, if you do that, and there's a ministry of sports, you'll give the ministry of sports. <laughs> <laughs> we have to find a way of making sure that these guys are a team. If, for example... We state that if you find truly you cannot work together, go back to the people and seek a fresh mandate with a new person. Mm. When, when the president or the governor knows that his being is threatened by not working together, then they will put an extra mile. That's my view. I might take. And it's difficult. In Kenya, things don't just work the way they should work. They work the way some of us want it to work. Mm-hmm. See, the question that uh, actually uh, from the basis of the question I was asking, you've actually responded to. Because even with our presidency, 
right from right. the inception of the first government we had vice presidents had a portfolio vice Correct. president and minister for this vice president and minister for the other and Correct. it worked yeah, but he was fired on uh, one o'clock news. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yes, there, there, was that, that there, there, there was that. There was that little detail. Money. Yes, but but remember the, the, the benefit of the system that you're speaking of. He couldn't be or she couldn't be fired as a member of parliament. What you could be fired from is the position that you held in government, mm. but you are still right. a member of parliament. Yes, that is true. It was a, I, in my mind. It, it was a good balance. Get ministers now. Yes. from uh, uh, members of parliament. Hmm. But again, look at the number they're proposing. How will 400 and something MPs debate? If you give each three minutes of every available time, some of them will not speak in the five years. <laughs> Mishimiro, even when there were fewer and, and, and the numbers were really minuscule, there are people who didn't speak at all, apart from the day when they're being inaugurated. They, they, they didn't say a thing. For, 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 for the rest of the well, generation. yes. Well, well, when you go and elect Anguashi that doesn't speak. <laughs> <laughs> what is the miracle you want to happen for them to speak? <laughs> I know people who don't who have not spoken in the last parliament and they are still there in in the second phase. <laughs> Do you, you think Wanjiko Wanjiko cries all the time about their leaders? But, but Wanjiko uh, makes the it choice. Is them, it is them that made that choice. That's why I tell them, make a wise choice now. And if you make a mistake, please shut up for the next five years. <laughs> Do you think, Bona Kabogo, that um, a governor or a president should be given leeway to dismiss their deputy if they feel that the deputy is not working? Well, they, we can form a law that would take them back to the legislature and uh, a guy be re -vetted. You understand? Right. And the question also begs, if the deputy feels the president is become, he's lived his usefulness, can he or she initiate the removal. a process of removal of the president or the deputy? On grounds that I feel you're not doing what we campaigned to do. Correct. You know, we should may be able to make the law that you can remove a president on the following bit. Mm. One of them is incompetency. You know, Trump the was just impeached the day before yesterday. You, you know, the thing Second that I find um, interesting with our system, and probably something that we're having difficulties uh, transitioning into, is that leadership can actually be changed using the law. Uh, there seems That's to it. have been a, a thought process that when somebody has a political position, it's it's for as long as it's, it's there theirs. And, and they also behave as though it's theirs. And, and then they're very surprised you, when they don't have it. I tell you honestly, I tell you honestly speaking, if I was one of those Kenyan leaders who just want positions of leadership, yes, and I have a little bit liquidity, I will ask a popular candidate, you pick me as your deputy, but I'll fix him in a few months. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's easier to deal with that, with one, than to deal with 800,000 people in Nairobi. Mm. <laughs> and you, you can imagine that Kenyans are, are capable of doing such things. Mm. <laughs> like, um, you know why I had to state that I'm not going to Nairobi? It's because that's not who I am. I know I'll do a good job in Nairobi. I know I'll fix Nairobi. In six months, Nairobi would be different. I know I would do that. But that's not who I am. So who are you, Mwishimiwa? I'm a different breed, man. I think I was born uh, before my time. Why do you because say so, Mwishimiwa? I, I don't do things the Kenyan way. Hmm. I don't look for a vacancy to go and make some money. For me, politics is a calling. It's not a business. I could call it a hobby. I want to participate in taking our country to the next level. Look at this guy who came to Kiambu. He's now in Nairobi again. What the, you know. <laughs> <laughs> what the dick really? yes. <laughs> Can you imagine if, I, if, if I, I really was on the ballot in Nairobi now, I was pushing, hmm. how would you tell the difference between me and him? It would look like a circus, absolutely. 
<laughs> we would look the same. And again, it's an incursion by Kambu people. We are supposed to have come from the same university. Now look at it again. We are going to Nairobi, me and him from Kambu. What? Uh, we asked you this last year and you said uh, there's still time. So let's just ask you again this year because the election is next, the general election. Are you yes. are you gunning for any political seat in the next election? Why do you want me to make people happy oh. or unhappy? It is good to make people happy. If they happen to be unhappy, of course, that really is their choice. I will tell the people of Kiambu who keep singing, Kaba Kaba, you know, it's become a slogan even out of Kiambu. Don't worry. Be happy? <laughs> Be happy. I got your backs. <laughs> William Kabogo, thank you very much for speaking to us today. <laughs> I thank you very much. I love fighting. It's always a pleasure, man. Thanks thank so much, you. William. Thank you. Have a good day.